Hey, morning everybody. Welcome to the Avoiding Break podcast with me, Jermaine. I'm Lilian. Oh, I like doing it when we when we um just chat through things together, you know. Yeah, me too. Yeah, it's good. It's good. I think times um times have been quite quite strange because it just feels like a little bit like um it's moved quickly. I think a lot of different things to actually accommodate and respond to maybe yeah. as well. Um, I'm not sure. What do you think? How's the last few weeks been? I think busy. Yeah? I think the past few you months a bit have stiff been busy. as well. Loosen up. <laughs> Uh, trying to be close to you okay that's very nice <laughs> um it, it has been busy and i think definitely in terms of um the world of money finance um and, and also you know thinking about the impact on mental health but certainly where it comes to money finance economics it's yeah. been i feel it's been a really 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 tricky the last few months yeah it has been and i think no matter how much we kind of think oh you know you can try and try and look ahead and see these things coming it's still it still is tricky when these it actually happens yeah and you know when we say th- see things coming like let's just let's just go into that a little bit right so i think for today one thing that's definitely been on my mind and i think we should just discuss that on on this week's uh, segment is the impact of the current economic challenges that we're facing domestically that just good decent honest ordinary people are facing and kind of a little bit about what's kind of got us there what are some of the big pressures that we're facing and you know thinking a little bit about how we try to to fight our way out through the other side yeah you know what do you what do you think i mean you know, just take that question from the top um so kind of what's got us here i think kind of inflation is the big one isn't it it's the it's the impact the the long impact from obviously the times that have happened from covid and things like that and everything that's going on in the world um energy prices food prices just everything is is mm. going up and i think that while we we may have like we were saying before we may have seen this coming but the actual extent of it and the fact that there's no we don't know when it's going to end when a price is going to start coming down when is energy going to get a bit when is and when energy price is going to come down i think that is um yeah what's really tricky at the minute about it yeah i, I agree with you on the on the macro points when I think about just good, normal, ordinary life, so I think we have been, we've just had some massive blindfolds on yeah. and have been completely, um, completely scammed on one hand, but also ignorant on another. And I'll tell you what I mean, right? Because yeah. I, cause I know what you're saying about the macro points, but I'm like a normal guy. You're economist, I'm normal guy. So for me as normal guy, we have been spending like mad. Normal people have been spending yeah. like mad. Yep. And we've been spending like mad in uh, an era where we are not seeing money come in. Like, if I look at the majority of people that I know, you are not seeing your monthly wage, because most people are monthly wage earners, yeah. you're not seeing it increase. Yeah. If, I, if I look at people who have been on furlough, they are, or, um, you know, or any kind of like income support through this COVID period, they're still spending heavily yeah. and i think one of the reasons for that is we've lived through a time since the financial crisis of low interest rates credit's been cheap so you can keep spending and yeah but maybe maybe i think that's a factor but what okay here's a here's a thing that i'm trying to i'm trying to test a little bit right okay when you came through covid for most people you would be bored as anything because what what actually happens, right? When we're used to we're social animals, we're used to social interaction, that engagement. Yeah. We're used to going out, going to the pub, going to a park, going for a meal, whatever. It doesn't matter. Going on holiday. Yep. Yeah. Since then, let us actually be very clear about what's been happening. Not try and dress it up in economics, but but be really clear about what's been happening. We have all been stuck at home, with only the internet to basically keep us um, keep us company. Mm. We're spending time with our spouses who are also just stuck on the internet, (laughs) with our kids who are spending time stuck on the internet. And if we're not just using the internet for entertainment, we are using it to fulfill our needs and desires by spending it on random stuff. And it's so easy to to, um, tell ourselves stories as well. I know that I've, I've done it several times during the lockdown period where it's like oh you know I'm not going out for dinner or I'm not buying my coffee so I can afford to buy this or I'm not going on holiday so I can buy yeah all of these other things and while that may be true I think 
us as human beings, we aren't usually very good at kind of being accurate about what we No, we're terrible. Like. You're dressing this up so much. I don't understand this. Guys, you can tell I've had my coffee this morning. I don't think this one has because <laughs> you're dressing it up. This is, that is, that is, that is honestly, that's part of the scam. Human beings are absolutely programmed to be wrong. 100% we are programmed to be wrong a huge amount of the time. And through this last time, and the whole point, of, that I'm, the reason I'm trying to stress this now is because in order for us to get past something, we need to acknowledge it first. Yeah. The whole point is that we have been operating in incredible bubbles, the vast majority, I'm not saying everybody clearly, but the vast majority have been operating in incredible bubbles where we have let a lot of loose behaviour come in. We're no exceptions, by the way. I think some of our behaviour is very loose. Yep. It needs to be tightened. But we've got to understand that we are programmed to be incredibly wrong. Mm -hmm. We are operating at a time where we do not have the resources to necessarily back up all the decisions that we're making. Yeah. And we have got no path out of this. So you can say we don't know when all these prices are coming down. We've got no path out of it. I'm not saying things will always be as challenging, but I just want to be very honest. We have got no path out of the current macroeconomic challenges. Tell me if that's wrong. No, it's not wrong. So then we need to acknowledge that properly. Yeah. We need to acknowledge it. Honestly. Right. So just think about what we do. Look, you look like you've just been, you look like you're windswept or whatever the phrase is, huh? Not at all. But, oh, cool, blimey. <laughs> God, this sounds a bit tricky, Jermaine. Well, it's tricky, no, isn't it? No. <laughs> it, it is. It's tricky. So look, let's have a think about some of the things that you know that 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 are on the horizon that we think we could address quickly. Even these may even be things that we look to address ourselves. I mean, give me a, give me a sentence. What are you thinking? The two big things that come to my mind is stop ordering takeaways. Yeah. Because that is it's just so easy to do. It's just right there on your phone. Um, and also the other one is with our energy bills. So yeah, energy bills at the minute are scary. And the one thing that we've been quite loose with for a while is, you know, the heating will be on and we'll have windows open and things like that. And we're just not, we haven't been progress. We haven't had to think about it that much previously about the actual real impact of the high energy prices. So for me, it is, you know, changing that, the settings on our thermostat, putting a jumper on, making sure that, you know, we, we're not having the heating come on when it doesn't need to come on. So, right. So interesting now i would expect right that if you say when you say that i'm not sure if that goes far enough and i don't know right because we haven't got a smart meter i'm not really a fan of them it is no, no particular reason it is, uh, f frankly um the point i'm making is i don't know how to track how much energy we'd save by m making some of these adjustments because i, I, I frankly I, I think we're not too bad with some of the things you're suggesting but i don't think it really matters because if we've had several times where we've had the windows open because we'd like to get the fresh air yeah. and the heating comes on, no, I, yeah. just addressing that is gonna save money. I get you. Uh, look, I'm not. I'm not saying. Sorry, I'm not saying that anything that you're saying is bad. No, no. I'm, so I'm. I'm getting get it right. So that all these things are, are clearly sensible things to save money. Yeah. So, hundred percent, they're clearly sensible. My hypothesis is, if you look at the the rate of problems you have. They may be so severe, you need more severe measures to actually go about making progress. It's almost like what you've just said to me is almost like putting a bandage on an arm. But I'm like, yeah, but they chopped my arm off. Like, I don't really need a bandage right now. I need something else a little bit more extreme. Okay. And um, because I think this goes to some real. I think this goes back to even at the beginning of lockdown, real um, almost like wartime discipline, super conservative type of um, domestic money management. You know, I'm, I'm talking literally full audit of every single pe pound that goes out and everything that comes in. I'm talking about breaking everything that you do down to make sure that you're, you're clearly, um, you've got your very clear pot that goes out on your core household running expenses. Yeah. You've got to be saving a little bit because I think you, you're good, and it, it, it needs to be a decent percentage of what you earn, 10, 20%. Um, it's got to be something like that. You want to maybe invest a little bit, but I'm, I, maybe if you're going to invest, I think you're investing at the lower end of things. I think you're investing kind of like 5 or 10% of what you're, of what you're bringing in. It, it, this may not be the investment horizon. This may be more the kind of rainy day fund, 
protect myself if something goes wrong horizon. Yeah. Yeah. I think if you've got debt, I think this could be where you start thinking about, um, you think about overpaying. I'm not even sure if you do overpay, frankly, but I think this is real sensible, solid financial breakdown and re-engineering. So just completely going back to basics of budgeting where are your leaks plug in those leaks and, yeah and actually almost starting with a blank sheet of paper i would gut it all i would genuinely gut it all like when you think about like your energy bills and stuff yeah. for, for most people right they're not like that they're not that kind of um like loose with how they spend money on, on energy and things like most of us don't just leave taps running don't just leave radiators on and windows open all that kind of stuff like the reality is it's it may happen yeah of course it's natural but most people are not just frivolously doing that or carelessly doing that. It would be surprising if it were. Yeah. Right? I, I Yeah, no, I understand that point. It Thank would be you. surprising if it were. And when the, when your bills are kind of ticking up, as much as you might try to make adjustments, sometimes there really aren't a huge amount of adjustments that you can actually see to make. I'm not saying there aren't there, but it's, it's hard mm. to see it sometimes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Sometimes it's the same thing that we laugh about with a Tesco shop. You know, a Tesco shop, if you wanted to do a small shop, it used to be like a 30 quid shop, for example. Then it became a 40 quid shop. Now a small shop is a 50 quid shop. And it's like, how is that possible? I've got nothing. Yeah. Right? How much room do you have to not do that shop, though? No, I agree with that. You, there are some things that are just unavoidable. So your food, your energy, your, your rent or your mortgage, all of those kind of things they are unavoidable and i think that's the good thing about what you were saying about when you were doing the budgeting which is you if you know what those things are and you know what your more discretionary spend is the stuff that you're spending on stuff that you don't actually need to spend on takeaways and things like that yeah then that's where you focus those things that you you don't need to spend it's got to be a else. super smart focus on it i agree yeah. with you right because like i'm just trying to i was trying to think to myself like what if somebody said to me what what can you reasonably immediately go and address to, of these discretionary bits right and i think when you look at stuff like and i'm not trying to encourage anybody to kind of like live an overly basic life but i think we've sometimes when you're in the, when you're in like almost like wartime conditions you've got to realize how privileged you are and you've got to try and rein it back in yeah so it's like if we've got say like tv packages where we've got every movie and every sport it's not necessary like clearly you will be okay and survive without that without those channels for yeah. example yeah that's a massive saving it is. oh and guys actually it's worth me saying i just realized so we're with virgin media i was looking at our bills and our bills have gone up by 10 quid i thought i'm sure this should be lower what virgin media had done so i had a, a agreed a package i know you're laughing like, look this is important <laughs> we'd agree a package virgin media and we had a discount on it they reduced the price of our package by a small amount and by reducing it, they then decided to remove the discount because they said we made changes to our plan. So I'm on the same package. I've never, ever, ever called up and changed it. But they reduced the price of the package by a small amount themselves. And then they removed my discount, which was bigger than the cost of the reduction. And so all of a sudden, my bill goes up and I've never touched anything when it's all their adjustment. Un that, for me, is unscrupulous. But I think you've raised an interesting point as well, which is that we need to be scrutinising everything. 100%. Now bank statements yes. bills from your utilities from your broadband tv all of those things any single thing that comes in where they're asking you for your money you scrutinize it 100 percent. you know guys we have got to be watching this like a hawk because that virgin media adjustment i don't think many people see if they pay by direct debit no you may not notice and what's worse is that i used to keep my account in quite a bit of credit for it was, it was mostly for budgeting reasons and that's fine but I did not notice. They made this change slyly in December. Because my account had always been in credit, I'd never noticed. We only went into paying by the full direct debit now, March. And then it's like, hold on a minute. This is not what I should be paying. So as it stands, they owe me money and they've got to make a correction. Because of what I believe is some shady business. Because there's no reason for them to change my contract when I've never authorised it. That's a good example. Yeah. Watch for the same thing with, with any telecoms. So look for your mobile phone, look for your TV, look for your broadband. Yeah. Watch it like a hawk. It's so true because even when like on your mobile phone you may see a charge and you think, oh, okay, yeah, a couple of pounds here. Of scrutinise pounds. everything. Everything. Challenge everything, scrutinise everything, question everything, push back on everything. Yep. Same thing is going to come through with stuff like car insurance. 
and um, I can't say so much about car finance. Although, look, guys, if, if by now you're listening to us and you've got car finance, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> I know some people obviously need car finance, but just play smart, you know, yeah. play smart. And don't be afraid to drive a Nissan Micra for a couple of years um, rather than driving an Audi or a BMW or whatever it may be. Just don't be afraid to just live humbly. Um, in the long run, it will pay off, I think. Because right now is not the time to be driving the supercars. No. Fair? Yeah. No, yeah, I completely agree with that. And not, and I think one of the big things about this is you don't want to give yourself stress, especially in these times, by trying to overstretch to have the, the nice car or whatever. That just causes too much stress. So. Yeah, I, would, I, I, I think what you've made is a super important point. I'd rephrase it slightly because okay. I think your point is so important. What is likely to happen right now is we will all experience a more hidden almost covert kind of stress because no matter what happens unless you are incredibly well off so that you have no worries at all and you're not impacted by the economy you will face some kind of pressure that you did not face before because all the challenges we're having and the level of um wealth reduction is is becoming more widespread yeah so you'll have stress and it's about keeping it low reducing it where you can Definitely. it's not about not giving it you know what i mean because yeah. you're gonna get it oh i completely agree <laughs> you're gonna get it i think you're that, gonna get it and also even just the um the 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 mental knowledge of knowing that you are taking steps towards helping yourself can help relieve that stress as well 100 percent. that that action you're taking action you're taking control i'm such a big believer in that helps keep you your stress levels down and help you help your mental health 100 percent important um and these these are things that are absolutely critical Guys, we've got to be really waking up and smelling the coffee a lot more. And this is something that we were saying right at the beginning of COVID and it feels like we've come full circle. Whereas it seemed like we had a, a relatively better time um, in the last few months, the reality is, is our money, our finances, the economy is not supporting that. That That is not accurate based on what we're seeing, right? So it's absolutely essential that we recognise that. Like, don't lie to ourselves. It's the worst thing that we can do. Yeah. We cannot lie to ourselves. We've got to see. And you're not getting any help. There's no point looking at any kind of... um. Any, there's no point looking at any interventions uh, where you're going to get help. Most normal people just don't have that at all. Not at all. Yeah. So you've got to fight back. We're encouraging you. Scrutinise everything. Unpick every bill. Look at every single little luxury that you're enjoying and really ask yourself, can I cut that in half? Yeah. For example, just, just start there. Can I cut it in half? Can I reduce it? How can I start bringing things back in? I remember vividly, we sat right where we're sitting now and we spent hours re-engineering our finances. It put us in a good position. We worked through really well and sensibly, but we started to loosen up a little bit more. Yeah. We're, we're starting to believe the hype. And I'm telling you for free, as somebody who's making the mistakes, um, it's not going to work out. It's not going to work out. Now, we're saying that and sharing this message because if we can start to reorganise ourselves now, we've got a chance of actually being a bit more resilient when the real pressure comes. Yeah. Right now, times aren't really pressured. They could no, be a lot worse. It could get a lot worse. Yep. Yeah? Definitely. It could get a lot worse. So it's all about, guys, trying to make sure we're as well prepared as we can be for the challenges that may come. You know what I mean? I, most definitely. I, I think that's it. I think I think you've hit the nail on the head there. It's like whatever that means to everyone, yeah, just make sure you get yourself prepared. Yeah, and look, it's all it's worth us all listening, thinking, sharing, what we can do to kind of really reconfigure them finances. Yes. You know, if guys, if you're listening and you've got ideas, just share them. Every media channel, you already know this, right? Um, but please share them. I think for us we're gonna I'm gonna just be stepping through the bank statements. Yeah. And looking to. at and looking at everything. You know, you've already made a few good points, Leanne, around um, our discretionary eating out. That's a big waste of time. Um, you've made a, a point about our utility bills, and yep. I trust you more. Frankly, you're the one who runs all our utility bills uh, forever. So um, I, I will listen to you. She, you're, you're clearly telling me that I'm doing something wrong, so that yep. I'll, I'll sort that out. Um, but there are going to be loads of other things, guys. There, there, are, there the, are. Subscriptions. Scriptures that's even, a that's a killer even driving where you could walk like if you're going to like your local shops or something like that that's such a good point and you drive there because obviously it's quicker such a good <laughs> you point on a walk but actually petrol prices are ridiculously expensive and those short journeys can you know what add up brilliant point yesterday i went out i had to pop out and you said you thought i was going to drive i did think you were going to right 
I decided to walk. I listened to an audiobook. I met with, spoke to, and fully engaged with three of my wonderful neighbours. I saw my brother-in-law and nephew and spoke with them and said a couple random hellos on the street. Amazing. Yes. Yeah, Brilliant. Like you saved money, but you've had a much nicer much experience. Much nicer experience. <laughs> yeah. Much, much nicer. And we saved some money. Yeah. What then happened is I had to go out a little bit later. I had to drive because it's a much further journey. Filled my car up. And what I used to pay for a full tank of petrol is what I've just paid for half. Yeah. What? Sorry, what? Literally, I put this thing in and I kept seeing the money go up. I thought, hang on a minute. What, what exactly is going on here? Yeah. It's... When is this going to stop? It's crazy. Look, guys, these things, these little trade-offs, they may sound really simple and silly, and you might look and say, oh, yeah, but that doesn't make a big difference. Look, I promise you, I can tell you definitely, from what we did last year, it definitely makes a difference. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, it's going to be necessary, because most people haven't got the money to withstand not making a change. That's a fact. Most people have not got the resources to not make a change. Yeah. Right? And you want to make the change early before it becomes too bad, too yeah, difficult. Yeah, because this is hard to change. Like you were saying before, we're, yes, we are rubbish at kind of um, really knowing what's going on. And we tell ourselves these stories. And um, making change is hard and it takes a long time. So you need to practice from now. 100%. And look, guys, that's the, that's the message. For me, this is not a message of, of um, pessimism. No. This is one of optimism. This is, yeah, look, this is just control. simply saying, look, let's just wake up. Let's see what's right in front of us when it comes to the, where we're living, how we're living, pressures we're under. Let's see it clearly and let's get moving. That's all it is. This is an yeah. empowering um, feeling. This is all about us putting ourselves in the best positions we can be in life. And we're doing that for ourselves and for our family. Yes. Look, here's the, here's the funny thing. We've been recording now for 20 minutes. Our little boy's sitting just right opposite us, lying on the table. He's now smiling at us. He was reading his books. But, you know, he's brought in. We're all trying to avoid broken. We're all just trying to do our thing. And this is what it's all about. Getting your team together, uniting behind one message, uniting in a strong way, having that commitment, having that passion. Yes. Leaving it all out there and making sure we fight for our survival and for our advancement. That's our job. Yes. That's our job. We do it for ourselves and we do it for the next generation as well. Yeah? Yes. Cool. All right. As you said, nails hit on the head. So let's let's roll. We've got things to do. It's Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there as well. Thank you for all you do. Blessing us with um, the biggest gifts that, that life can ever can, can, can ever give us. Are you getting emotional? No. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to go and look after this mother because she's, she's done a great job and she's given me a gift that, that is priceless. This, this priceless gift over there who's currently looking frowning and saying, Daddy, I want to get off my chair. So we're going we're gonna to roll, go and have our nice family Mother's Day. Have a wonderful Mother's Day. Everybody um, have good have a good time avoiding broke. Let us know your thoughts, comments, feelings, advice. Give us some advice yes. as well. We, we, we'll always take that. Um, we'll see you soon. Okay. Yeah. You take care. Cool. Bye, Bye. guys.